Hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. This life for real. real. I know I understand. We on the front line. We know it's one time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner, now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. We live in this life for real. I know I understand. We on the front line. We know it's one time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner, now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. Uh, I'm a warlord like Joe Ab with a King James. Turning pages to my toes tag. Heathers broken like Kit Kats. Scoffers watch like six packs. On the marriage, can't hit that. Prove a friend, greater impact. I made a gold, I'm bending steel. My iron is sharp, my flesh is killed. Every knee got a bend and kneel. When death destroyed, all is fulfilled. Live righteous or die trying. I tell the truth of my tribe line. Broke the news, my eye was blinded. Now I'm marked, I'm signed crying. Made a gold, I'm bending steel. My iron is sharp, my flesh is killed. Every knee got a bend and kneel. When death destroyed, all is fulfilled. Live righteous or die trying. I tell the truth of my tribe line. Broke the noon, my eye was blinded. Now I'm marked, I'm signed. We live in this life for real. I know I know still. We on the front line, we know it's war time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner, now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. Let me know if you got something that you need me to explain. Like if you're looking at a scripture or something like that. You... Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, give me, give me what you got. Deuteronomy 23, 23, 7 through 8. God okay. Shall not have her a boy, a boy All right. Here we go. Here we go. That's what it came down to. That's what it came down to. You got a white girlfriend? No. Who, who you love in your life that's white? <laughs> well, why you worried about an Edomite? No, I'm just saying what the scripture says. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me ask you a question. Was that law? We're gonna go there. Let's go there. Yeah, Deuteronomy 23 and one. Okay, so now we got to the root. We got to the spirit behind the question. Is that you love the white man? <laughs> you love the white man. I mean, they say don't have hair. Okay, so but before we get to the Edomite, who are the Edomites? Right. I believe the Edomites black people. Black people. Okay. All right, so we, we still got to deal with that. We still got to deal with that. Okay. The Edomites are, are black people. Let's go to, let's let's finish explaining Esau. So we're going to come back to Deuteronomy 23. Right. We're going to come back to, that's not a boy, an Edomite. And then we'll go to, uh, Amos one. yeah, Amos 1 and uh, Obadiah, all of that. Three transgressions and all of that. Okay, so I want to give you the biblical uh, explanation of Esau. Keep going. Genesis chapter 25 verse 27 uh -huh. and the boys grew so Jacob and Esau grew up right and Esau was a cunning hunter who who's a cutting hunter on the earth right now who be hunting the lions and the giraffes white man. the white man right. okay okay all right so we breaking it down right now that's right we breaking it down so we know that the white man we know that the white man is not really white you see through his pale or lack of complexion skin and you see his what blood and what color is the blood? Red. Right. Red. So his children come out red. And who are uh, <laughs> the cavemen? But they ain't. But 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 the white man ain't the only one that's a good hunter. Yeah, he's not the only one. But black people overseas and in all types of areas that we ain't even been to that's good at hunting. That's okay, I got do. you. I got you. Okay, so so point taken. Point taken. Other people hunt, but I still ask you, who's known universally for hunting? Is the black man universally known for hunting? Give me a few minutes, bro. Now, the, the black man is universally known for hunting down women and <laughs> having sex with a bunch of women. That's what we universally known for. You see what I'm saying? The white man, who who uh, who can you typically find in Dick's Sporting Goods? Oh, yeah, or the Bass Pro Shops. And Bass Pro Shop. 
The white man, right? He, remember the scripture say, he that had the ear, let him hear. So if the Lord opens your understanding to receive it, it's for you. Keep reading. A man of the field. Who's a man of the field? Who's the outdoorsman? Universally known. We're not talking about a couple of people here and there. The average black man is the average black man a hunter and an outdoorsman? Or is the average so-called white man a hunter and an outdoorsman? Teach. And remember, you're putting all these characteristics together. Red, hairy. Who's more hairy than a white man? The white man is more likely to have a big beard than a black man. Right. The white man have hair running all the way down his back. A white woman's, like her, the hair, the hair is light colored. It's hard to see, but if you look close, a white woman look like a damn wolf, man. <laughs> they got hair coming out of everywhere. Teach. Read. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. What does the average black man like to do on a regular? Hmm. It's a word that starts with a C. Oh, man. Chill. Jay. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, Jay. Right. Come on, Jay. Receive this understanding. Right. This is basic understanding. That's the Bible right. says you got two completely different type of people. These are the greatest two nations that were put on this earth. Right. Two different nations. One of them would look one way. Another one would look another. The one that looks like everybody else is stronger than everybody else. Right. Right. Remember, Jacob looked just like everybody else. It was no need to make reference to his complexion because everybody was complected like Genesis 2 and 7. See? Just like the dust of the ground. That's right. And he said that he would be the strongest of the two. Right. Right. And then you got a completely different race of people that don't look like everybody else. And their complexion is red. Right. You see the blood through their skin. Right. They're hairy. They're universally known for hunting. Right. They're universally known for uh, being an outdoorsman, a man of the field. Right. Right. So you got to connect the dots. It's not about oh well, a bunch of people hunt. Well, that's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a nation of people, a manner of people. Go back to verse twenty-five. Mm -hmm. It says two different manner of people. Read. Genesis 25, verse 23. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people. Two manner of people. So we're talking about the mannerisms of the entire race of people. We're right. not talking about a few people here and there. Right. The average black man like to chill at the crib. Just out here on the street corners, kicking it, chilling. The average white man right now is deer hunting season. Right. Mm -hmm. They out there in the field right now. They running the dogs. They got the four wheelers. They they hunting. They got the rifles. They got the shotguns. They got all of that. Yep. That's what they're universally known for. Yep. Now let's give them some more. Genesis chapter twenty seven. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter twenty seven. Bring that up. Genesis chapter twenty seven, verse thirty eight. Bring it out. And Esau said unto his father, "Hast thou but one blessing, my father?" Bless me, even me also, oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So Esau was mad because the prophecy from the beginning was that the covenant was going to be passed to Jacob. That's what the blessing, that's what the promise was. Right. Typically, the covenant, the blessing is given to who? The oldest or the youngest? The oldest. Right. But who was the oldest here, Esau or Jacob? Esau was the oldest. But that wasn't the prophecy. That was the custom. But the prophecy was that Jacob was going to receive the blessing. That's right. So Esau is upset that Jacob received the blessing. And here was his father's response. Read. Verse 39. Uh -huh. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So now, we're adding to the list of characteristics. Esau would be a red man. Mm-hmm. Not a white man, That's right. a red man. Right. Because you can see the blood through his pale complexion skin. Right. And on top of that skin, it says that he would be hairy. Right. Physical description. Then we get into their actions and their behavior, their mannerisms. Right. And it says that one of his mannerisms would be that he's an outdoorsman. Right. right. And another one of his mannerisms of his people is that they would like to hunt. That's right. And now, the, the next, his blessing is that his dwelling would be the what? The fatness of the earth. What is the fatness of the earth? What does that mean? The fat part. What is, like, 
<laughs> remember, remember back in the, how old are you? I know, 28. I know. 28. Probably maybe like your, uh, your older cousins, something like that. Maybe they might be in their like mid to late 30s. Back in the day, they used to say, man, that joint's fat. You know what I mean? Like a P-H-A-T back in the day, man. Man, that joint's fat. Not talking about a woman, but just something in general. What would that mean? If it was fat, I meaning it was what? What do they say now? That joint was lit. That joint was dope. That joint was fat. That, that's what, so when the scripture says, thy dwelling shall be the what? The fatness of the earth. What is that? That's how you know that black people are talking in the book, man. Right. We got the same mannerisms. Lingo. And these are our, yeah. yeah, same lingo and everything. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Isaac said, say what? The best part. Right. So my man Jay understands that Esau is red. He's hairy. He's an outdoorsman. He likes to hunt. And the places that he lives would be in the best part of the earth. Teach. Where are the best parts of the earth? Come on with it. Mm. The UK, all that type of thing. The UK? Yeah. Who's ruling the UK? Teach. What's she look like? <laughs> Bring it out. Make Look it, at them two pictures she look like. Make it plain. <laughs> Jacob and Esau right there. Make it plain. And you looking at you ain't saying it, but I see you look Queen Elizabeth look like that man right there. Right. You can see the redness through her skin. Her people like to hunt. Her people are known for being uh, outdoorsmen. Right. Her people are hairy. Her people dwell in the best parts of the earth. That's right. Guess what? The place that we live in in America is one of the best parts of the earth. That's why they came over and took it from the Native American Indians. That's right. And I'm gonna show you the motherland. Give me, give me Ephesians 4, 26. The origin of all things. Huh? Africa, Africa, good, good, good. Yeah, Ephesians 4, Galatians 4, Galatians 4. my fault, my fault. Galatians chapter four, you with me? Bring that up. The, the book of Galatians, chapter four, verse 26. But Jerusalem! But what? But Jerusalem! Where's Jerusalem? What continent? It's Jerusalem. Africa. Africa. So you got some understanding. The best part of Africa oh. is Jerusalem. Right. That's where the Garden of Eden was. Right. The fatness of the earth. Read. Which is above is free. Uh -huh. Which is the mother of us all. The scripture says that the Jerusalem is the motherland. Which is a part of Africa. Right. Who dwells in Jerusalem right now? The so-called white man. So, in your own words, you said the UK, right? White people ruler. The scripture says that the motherland is what? Jerusalem. White people. So-called white people. And then we know what country rules the entire earth right now. Huh? Europe? You said what country rules the entire earth? Yeah. Who has bases set up in every country? Mm. North America. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Right. So the white man has his major hub right here in America, ruling the entire earth from this place. Right. On top of that, he set himself up in God's holy garden, Jerusalem. Right. And on top of that, by your own confession, even in the UK, the Bible says that Esau would dwell in the fatness of the earth. That's right. right. But guess what? Jacob is there too. But get, what position is Jacob in in these places? Right. Because we're in America too. But what, what are we here in America? We're in the slums. That's right. We're in the slums. That's we're at the right. bottom. Esau would be ruling the earth. The Bible says Esau is the end. Right. He's the last ruling empire on this earth. And his dwelling would be the fatness of the earth. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 6. Matter of fact, before we go to second Ezra, go back to Genesis chapter 25. I'm going to give you the parable. What was going on in the womb and when they were born was a parable. I want to show you what that meant. Yeah. Verse 26. Genesis chapter 25 verse 26. And after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So the scripture says that when these twins were born, Esau came out first. He was red and hairy. And as he was on the way out, so he came out head first. 
And when you got down to his foot, you saw something on his foot. Read it again. And after that came his brother out, uh -huh. and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So one baby is all the way out, and as he's coming out, there's a hand on that little white baby's heel. Read. And his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old. So the scripture says that his hand took hold of Esau's heel as he was coming out. Was that the end of that verse? And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. All right. So that was a parable. I want you to I want you to understand that parable. So all this should clarify exactly who Esau is to this day. Exodus chapter six. Do I want to? No, I'm sorry. Ezra, move your hand. I think I want verse eight. Start at verse eight. Second Ezra chapter six verse eight. Uh -huh. Read it out. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, Read. when Jacob and Esau. Were I'm gonna do it. Nah, brother. The, the people that took the apocrypha out are the same ones that dwell in the fatness of the earth. Right. The same ones that's red and hairy. The same ones that's the hunter and uh, the outdoorsman. Right. Our, our sworn enemy from the beginning. So yeah, our forefathers wrote the Apocrypha. King James, a black man, authorized the translation of the Apocrypha. Right. So yeah, we wholly subscribe to the Apocrypha. It's him that does it. That's right. And right. he's taking it out because there's some, there's some missing links that you, you're only going to get in the Apocrypha. You're going you're gonna to get what Genesis chapter 25 means in the Apocrypha. Right. So you got an Apocrypha. So we're, we're closer in understanding than you realize. Read. Verse 9. Uh -huh. For Esau is the end of the world. The scripture says that Esau is the end of the world. What does that mean, Jay? Esau is going to be the, the last ruling empire before Christ comes. That's right. That's what the scripture is saying. And who's been ruling since the time of the Greeks? Right. They took a little bit of a break because the Bible prophesied that they had to fall for a short time. Right. And rebuild. That's right. They fell during the time of the Romans. In 193 AD, Septimius Severus, a black man, mm -hmm. brought about the fall of the Roman Empire. Teach. According to Bible prophecy. If it wasn't for the Bible prophesying that, they would have ruled from, from Rome straight through all the way until now. Right. But the Bible prophesied that they would fall and they would rebuild. Right. Give me a uh, give me a uh, Malachi one. Um. Uh. Yeah. Go, go ahead and finish that up. Finish that up. Thank you. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the scripture says that Jacob, who descended out of Jacob, Israel, Israel. and who who was the 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 greatest leader of the Israelites? On the left, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. What you got, Jay? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Jesus? Because the scripture says that uh, we, we speak in many different languages. Jesus is just an English transliteration of Yahweh Shai. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Hamashiach. Oh, yeah. Right. Yehoshua. Yeah. Right. Yahshua. They all mean the same thing. God is our salvation. That's right. So no matter what language, I can say it in Japanese. But our people understand English. When I say Jesus, universally people know who I'm talking about. Scripture. Right. Right. If I if I go up, matter of fact, watch this. Hey, that's a bias. Hey, my brother right here. Who's uh who's Hamashiach? Yeah, you should have got that on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I really don't know. There you go. You see that, my brother? The scripture says when you speak in tongues, you got to speak with an interpreter. And most of our people don't speak Hebrew. Right. So I can go back to Hebrew, but guess what? Even the Hebrew that we have to this day is still being corrupted by the same one that gave us the false image. That's right. Right. It's going to teach you the, the true Christ, the true understanding of his scriptures. Right. But uh, let's go back to Malachi 1 and 4. Yes, sir. Uh, start at verse... Start, start at verse 1. Malachi... Chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Let's go. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? My sister right there with the, the BCU sweater on. Who does God love? You? You don't know? Does he love everybody? He does? Does he hate anybody? Do you believe in the Bible? 
You don't believe in the Bible. But what do you learn about God? I've been to church. Church teaches what? I don't know. They don't teach, they teach from the Bible? Yeah, they do, but I don't believe in the Bible because it's man written. Okay. Uh, we got to keep back track. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. We're, we're going to let y'all build, get it built up, and then we're going to. Yeah, we'll deal with it over here. Read. Wherein has thou loved us? Uh -huh. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Say of the Lord. So, my sister, mo most of the time, yourself, most of the time, our brothers and sisters don't believe in the book. It's because this man. I got drills. This man held that book, lied to us about it, and right. put us in chains with it. Right. The issue isn't with the book, it's with the understanding, the false understanding that was given from the book. That's right. Everything in this book is true. Right. The people that wrote this book look just like you That's and right. look just like me. Yeah, right. God inspired those men and women to write the prophecies and the history of our people so that we will wake up one day here in America. Right. So I, I guarantee you don't have an issue with the book. The issue is with that man right there. Right. Right now we're dealing with Esau. We're going to clean this up. Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith uh, the Lord? Read. Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau. So God hates somebody. Who does he hate? He hates Esau. That's right. Who is Esau? Your slave master, the so-called uh, white man that's running rampant throughout the earth, destroying everything and everybody. Right. Read. And I hated Esau, uh -huh. and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. When did his mountains and his heritage get laid to waste? In 193 AD, when the Roman Empire fell. Teach. Read. For the dragons of the wilderness. Uh -huh. Verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we're, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. When were the Edomites impoverished? They were impoverished in the Dark Ages. Mm. When guess what? King James, a black man, ruled in Europe. That's right. right. And all the kings during the Dark Ages ruled. Right. They were all black. You look at the coat of arms. Have you, you heard of King James before? Yeah. Have you ever seen an image of King James? Oh, God, I've never seen an image. What do they typically, what do they tell you King James looked like? Looks like a white man. They say he looked like a white man, right? Uh, I think it's page like eight. I'm going to show you what one of the white men knows about King James that the average black man doesn't. Come come here, come take a look at this. And make sure to get it on camera too. Tim Holt. Yeah. This is a picture of King James that was taken out of the ancient historical records. When you, when you Google King James, a little white man that pop up, that's not the King James that no. ruled in Europe. That's a whitewashed image. Right. That's the heathen painting their images in our books. That's his image right there. That's King James right there. You're a black man. A black man. That's a right. black man. That's right. They ruled during the Dark Ages. King James was a dark man in the Dark Ages because dark people ruled in the Dark Ages. Right. You see how easy that is to understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay, Dark Ages. Who ruled during the Dark Ages? The dark people. See how simple that is? Yeah. The Bible is simple and it's plain to be understood. Right. Keep going. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. they shall build, but I will throw down. So the Bible prophesied that the Edomites would fall That's right. in 193 AD by Septimius Severus. Right. But that they would rebuild. What was another term for, for when they rebuilt their society? Um, restoration. It was called, it was, that's close. Oh. It was called the time of the Renaissance. That's right. That's right. The time of the Renaissance. So you got to ask if the Roman Empire, Empire fell and the white man didn't come back into power until the Renaissance, which means rebirth, who was ruling between those times? Right. Somebody's always ruling the earth. And guess what? Those people look just like you. That's right. They look just like you. So what we were explaining to the brother, the brother was having a hard time understanding who Esau is in the earth. And the Bible bears record that the Edomites are the so-called white man, woman and child that dwells here in America, right. the United Kingdom, Jerusalem, as the, the fake Jewish people, right. and got bases set up in every country and every empire across the globe. Right. Those are the Edomites. They're the last ruling empire that will be on this earth before Christ returns and sets up the everlasting That's kingdom. That's right. right. Keep reading. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. 
So the Bible says that the Lord has indignation or anger against the so-called white man forever. Right. Forever. So now that we established that with Edom, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 23 to go ahead and explain thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Because the, does the Bible contradict itself? No, sir. No, it doesn't. Sometimes things are in place for a time period. Right. So the brother, the, you know the brother's confused because he said uh, he doesn't believe Esau is the white man, but then he wants to go to thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Who, who are you talking about when you say thou shalt not abhor an Edomite? Who are you trying to save? You trying to save the white man. Right. We see through it. We see through the foolishness. Right. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go to Deuteronomy 23. What was that, verse 7? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. So now, what's going on, my brother? Why don't you come check this out real quick? Yeah, I'm kind of busy, brother. All right. So the scriptures so in Malachi said that uh, God has indignation forever against Esau. Right. right. So now, well, what's the understanding of this scripture right here in the law? Read. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, uh -huh. for he is thy brother. And Esau was our brother. He is our brother, technically. Right. But God said the prophecy was that it would be two different nations and two different manner of people. And they got two completely different uh, uh, <laughs> prophecies. Uh, two different things that have to happen to them eternally. Right. Read. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, uh -huh. because thou wast a stranger in his land. Right. So don't nobody want to argue about the Egyptians. Everybody want to argue about the Edomites. That's right. That law was temporarily in place when we came out of the wilderness into the promised land. Right. right. Temporarily. And we're going to give you an example of how it was temporary. Go to, uh, what, uh you go ahead and bring out Amos. When, uh, I, go, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Amos, chapter 1, verse 11. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. So during the time that that law was instituted, it's like everything was cool. But when the Babylonians uh, destroyed the, the Israelites, guess what? The nation of Edom was right there next to them, cheering them on. Right. Give me, uh, give, give me Psalms 137 to give them that history. I'll go over this way. To give them that understanding. Go ahead. The nation of Edom took part in the destruction of the Israelites. And sister, I want, I want to help build you up in uh, why you should believe in the Bible. Yes, sir. Read that. Psalms oh. chapter 137, verse 7. Uh -huh. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. The children of who? The children of Edom uh -huh. in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Who said, destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy the land of Jerusalem. Right. Destroy the people of Israel. The, 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 the Edomites took part in that. Read. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. The, the Edomites must be destroyed according right. to Bible prophecy. Was that it? Right. Read. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Uh -oh. Right, so the Edomites will get aboard one day. But during the time that these laws were given, we weren't to abhor them then. But they must be punished for their transgressions. That's right. Go back to Amos 1. Yes, sir. Amos chapter 1, verse 11. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Uh -huh. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. When did he pursue his brother with the sword? During the time of the Babylonians that right, we just right. read about. Read. And did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually. Uh -huh. And he kept his wrath forever. He had wrath against the Israelites forever, so he got to pay forever. That's right. Forever, ever. That's how long he got to pay. Right. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy. What you got? Uh, yeah, shit, we can hit, I'm, I'm sorry, we can hit Obadiah. Yeah, go ahead, bring that up. This is the future prophecy of Obadiah. Read. Obadiah, verse 18. Bring it out. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, uh -huh. and the house of Esau for stubble. So the scripture says that the Edomites will be stubble. What is stubble? Stubble is the stuff that's left, like the ash after things get burnt up. Right. 
Esau is going to be the stubble. Okay. He's going to be the kindling flame for this fire right here. Right. Read. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. We're going to devour the Edomites. Read. Right. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. So right there, that shows you the future prophecy of the Edomites proving that Deuteronomy 23, not a boring an Edomite, was temporary. That's right. right. Was extremely temporary. E shoot, uh, hundreds of years before that, go to 1 Samuel. 1 mm -hmm. Samuel chapter 15. It's going to show you that even way before this future prophecy, the Edomites were still aboard. That was a law that was temporarily put in place, but that time clock expired for the Edomites a long time ago. Verse 1. Yes, sir. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 1 Read. Samuel also said unto Saul what he say? The Lord sent me The Lord, the, I'm sorry, who sent them? The Lord sent me So the same Lord that told us Deuteronomy 23 and 5 and, I'm sorry, and 7 Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite What else did he say? To anoint thee to be king over his people So he anointed him king Over Israel uh -huh. Now therefore Hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. The Lord got something else to say. He said, don't abhor an Edomite in the past. But what is he about to say now? Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Who is Amalek? See, I don't know if the Zonovan has who Amalek is. But who, who is Amalek? Amalek is an Edomite. I just want to see if there's any reference to show you that Amalek. I know in, in Genesis like 37 it's going to give the record of who Amalek right. is, but uh, we don't need to do all that. Amalek is an Edomite. Right. Read. How he laid wait for him in the way uh -huh. when he came up from Egypt. Read. Now go and smite Amalek. Do what? Smite Amalek. But the scriptures in Deuteronomy said, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Right. right. This is proving that that law was temporarily in place. Right. There's other laws that were in place in the past that's not in place anymore. Right. Like what? Like, you can't get a divorce now. Don't nobody want to argue about that. Right. You can't have multiple wives. No, matter of fact, they do argue about that. They do. They, just, they, they resist Moses, so they resist Christ. Exactly. That's all it is. That's all it is. Read. Verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek uh -huh. and utterly destroy all that they have. So the scripture said the same Lord that told us don't abhor an Edomite. Guess who one of those tribes of Edom are? You got something for me? It says it's uh, the eldest son of Esau. There it is. And it's, it gives a scriptural reference too, yes, though. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Get, yes, get Genesis 36 and 16. Verse, verse 12. Uh, we this is a uh, genre compact Bible dictionary. Hey, Jay, we just broke down the whole don't abort and eat it, Mike, right. man. You ran off him. Right. <laughs> All right, check this out. All right, so look, I'm going to give you an abbreviated uh, recap. Go ahead, finish reading that. Amalek, son of Eliphaz, eldest son of Esau. So the scripture says Amalek was the oldest son of Esau, right? Let's read it out of the scriptures. Genesis 36, you got it? Yes, sir. Bring that up. The book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 12. And Timna Tim was concubine to Elphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Elphaz, Amalek. So, Jay, we understand that Amalek was an Edomite, right? Amalek was an Edomite. Go back to 1 Samuel 15. Yes, sir. And just jump straight to the point for him. Uh, just again, start at verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. So, the, so Jay, the understanding of Deuteronomy 23 and 7 mm -hmm. is that that law was temporary. Right. It was temporary. There's other laws that were temporary as well. Right. So you got to accept that that one is temporary as long. Uh, divorce, for instance, was also temporary. We were allowed to divorce our wives under Moses. Right. We were allowed to have multiple wives under Moses. That was temporary. And not a boring and Edomite was also temporary. Right. So so read this. So Deuteronomy 23 came before Samuel, right? Okay, so this is what happened in Samuel. Read. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. Bring it out. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way. Mm. This is the Lord speaking. Read. When he came up from Egypt, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. You see that, Jay? The scriptures in Samuel say, go utterly destroy Amalek, which is what? An Edomite. Right. 
and destroy all that they had. Read. And spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. I, give me another reader. Give me another reader. Need another break. Need another break. So the point is, Deuteronomy 23 and 7 was a temporary law that was in place. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.